welcome to another special 100th episode of Grab Another 100th. Another 100th. <laughs> <laughs> and for today's episode, we have a very special guest, mentor, everything. GT is on the podcast today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me for the 100th episode. I am honored. I am honored. I've been waiting for this. Like, I, oh my gosh. I'm going to try to keep calm, but you know I'm going to probably get fired up. I mean, this is 100, y'all. 100 comes around one time. That's it. So this is really special. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming on. And I just want to point out to the listeners, like, the first time I talked to you was on our 10th episode. And that's, that's just right. mind-blowing to me. That was a year ago. A year ago. It is so crazy. It is so crazy. I remember you had come into SSPT and I, I, I remember like when we, we did that episode, I was like, wait, this is going to be the first time I'm actually talking to this student as well, you know, and, uh, and wow, a lot has changed in a year, which, which really, I want to say this real quick, if you got some time. <clears throat> it's amazing the time that we live in right now, the time that we live in today. And the, the, the current day and age that we live in, it is amazing how fast with technology, with access to people, access to opportunities, how ripe the healthcare market is, how ripe the market is in self-education. Um, it's just amazing when you combine all those things that I just said, how fast, if you act, if you act, how fast things can change for you. It's just, it's just surreal. And I, I literally am watching my, my younger, basically my younger sisters, my, my little sisters, like, like, it's like go through that experience and that transformation. So it's just phenomenal. We can't believe in ourselves. It's crazy. <laughs> because we didn't even prepare for today's episode. And I remember last time we were like, what are we going to ask GT? Like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. We got so nervous and it's so different now. And I just want to say, um, yeah, there's no plan for today. We're just going to wing it. And, um, oh, what we had, oh, I have to pull this up. We asked students, um, questions about how they're going to pay their loans back. And we wanted to read a couple of the responses that we got and see your response to okay. some of these people's responses. <clears throat> All right. Should be interesting. <laughs> just unbelievable to us. Um, some of the things that people really think about like loans and money and their capability. Um, let me pull it up real quick here. Oh, here we go. All right. Number one. So we said, how do you plan on paying off your student loans? First response, selling a kidney, but really. <laughs> Second response, <laughs> Winning the lottery, um, double income with no kids for the first five years post-graduation. And my favorite is every time a car pushes a red light, I say, hit me, take my loans. That's all I wanted to read. <laughs> read <that>. Well, <laughs> so this is... <laughs> <laughs> take on uh, you know what you don't know what you don't know that's my take because there might have been a time for me that um that i might have had a a a, a, a response like that I, I it's been so long but i actually want to empathize with those people right now i want to empathize with them and i think I think the truth is that you got those answers because they don't see a way out. And the best thing to do when you don't see a way out um, is, and I actually think they're handling it in the best way. Uh, unfortunately, that they don't see a way out. I'm going to get into that they might be wrong about that. But the way that some people handle it is through laughter and through being sarcastic and saying, okay, well, like, I'm willing to do this. I think I saw something recently. People were like, would you be willing to go to jail for, 
you know, a, a month or something like that. Um, if you can get rid of your student loans and everybody's like, sign me up, like, you know, I'm going to go. So, you know, at the end of the day, the truth is, is that there's a bigger issue. And the bigger issue is the following. People feel as though there is no way out of their financial obligations that they have towards the schooling that they've got. What I am here to tell you is that um, you stand uh, 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 wrong in this, okay? And, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, it is, we are about to go into 2020, okay? And we are in um, a very, very, very uh, unique time in our history. And that unique time is this. And I think I have, like, girls, I think I have the luxury of being over the age of 40 and being a 70s baby. And see, I don't take for granted what is currently in front of me right now, that it's in front of the both of you and everyone that's listening to this podcast. And that is the fact that we have this thing called the internet. And we have this, this ability to be able to use our knowledge, the knowledge that you all have paid a premium price for, our expertise. And we have this ability to impact and help people from not just all over the United States, but all over the world. I'm living proof of it. My students are living proof of it. And it hasn't always been available. The problem right now with schooling, traditional schooling, is that they're still training us like it is the 70s. So if you go off of that training and you go off of how it was in the 70s, then those answers that they gave are correct. The issue is that it is actually 2020. And today you can make boatloads of income in a very, very, very short period of time. So if, if you all don't mind, I'll say this real quick. My first job coming out of physical therapy school, I made $39,500 a year. And by the way, I was very happy with that pay because in, per, in perspective, I've made, you know, $7.50 and, and cents, some of that, an hour at Perry Ellis, which is at the Sawgrass Mills Mall. Right. And again, I was very happy with that because in relation to that, I was making, I started off at $3.25 an hour when I was working at TJ Maxx as a janitor. And then I eventually, over two and a half years there, I moved up to head cashier. I was making $5.50. And by the way, I was very happy with that because in relation to that, I used to work at a Chinese restaurant and I was a dishwasher and I was getting paid $2.50 under the table. And by the way, I was very happy with that because in relation to that, I used to work and do sales for the Sun Sentinel at the age of 15. And I made $11, I think 35 cents over two weeks because it was all commission. So I was actually making about 26 cents an hour. So when you look at that, and if you think that, like, I mean, by the way, I started work in the 90s, okay? That's when I started actually working. And if you look, like, that's how you made money. You traded your time for money. You traded time for money. You traded time for money. And depending on what level of status you were at, you can make anywhere between 26 cents an hour, or you can make as much as I was making as a PT in 2001, which was $19 an hour, right? Okay. Well, today, I've made $19 in a millisecond. I, I've, I've actually made, um, I've had so much where I've made over $550,000 in a month. Right, so 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 we live in a different era. The problem is, is that school is not teaching us the ways of this different era. So people don't know what they don't know. That's it. People don't know what they don't know, and it is true because everything that we're learning is not to. <laughs> It's not, you know, up to our times right now, as you've been saying. And that's why students are frustrated coming out of school, figuring out, okay, now I need a job. I'm making this income. And 
less than a year. Now we're seeing it even sooner, less than a year deciding, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I'm trading all of my time for <laughs> little money. And it's just, it's crazy. But we do have some other responses to another question, Sarah. The other one. <laughs> the other one was more of a poll because the response to the question of how do I, or what is your plan to pay off your student loans was something along the lines of, it just is what it is. And we put a little poll like, do you agree with this statement? Yes or no? And I was shocked that it's like 50-50. And a lot of people feel like it just is what it is. And what do you say to those people? What do you say to them? Um, you say you're wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, but listen, but, 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 but again, again, before we deploy you know, judgment, we have to deploy empathy and sympathy. Why are they saying it is what it is? What, like, why are they saying that? The reason why you're saying that, by the way, if you come from, if, if I, I mean, I don't mean to get too deep with this, y'all, but I am going to get deep with it because I don't care, man. This is the 100th episode of the Gratitude Project. Man, I'm freaking fired up right now. The reason why this is so important is because if 50% of people are saying it is what it is, there's a reason behind it. It's because it's either A, not talked about in school. I do believe that most professors are just turning a blind eye to it. Why? Because they can't do anything about it. They can't do anything about it. So let's just act like it doesn't exist. How often are your professors actually telling you, hey, do you all know how much debt you're getting into right now? Do you all realize the stuff I'm teaching you is not going to pay? <laughs> it's not going to be in relation to the amount that they're paying, that you all are paying us. They're not going to say that. So they're not going to. So let's just turn a blind eye to it. Okay, so are, are, are students being educated about other ways? No, because if we now educate them on like the stuff that I've, I've, I've trained you all, Right. Well, what does that do to a professor? Well, that makes the professor expendable. So let's just act like it doesn't exist. So you got to understand that, like, like the reason why they say it's what it is is because in their mind, it truly is what it is. Okay. Now they go to internships. Okay. So now I go to internships. And they start hearing some of the horror stories at internships and people say, oh my gosh, oh, I've got all these, oh, this. Well, well, look, they're going to internships that those people only know what they know as well. So how do we expect them to have any different answer? Now, the reason why it's 50%, 50-50, and the reason why it's not 95-5 or 90-10 is because of this thing called the internet. And in the internet, we're able to actually say, hey, is there another way? And some people can turn on their phone and say, wait a minute, who the heck is that guy? Hey, who the heck are these two ladies? Hey, hey, what's going on with this? Hey, why are they so damn happy? What the heck is wrong with them? Like, okay, wait, wait, what, you know? And then people get curious and they, and so, and so as you all see, to be honest with you, I'm shocked at those numbers. I'm shocked at 50-50. I'm shocked. I, I mean, I actually think I, I'm optimistic for the fact that it's 50-50. It's, it's I think people are starting to realize that there's a grassroots movement and there's people that are actually paving the way. And it's not just one person or two people. There's actually people that those maybe top, you know, five to 10 people have helped. They've helped so many other people find a way out. I think the issue for many people and I think, and by the way, I think that 75% of the people that probably answer that poll actually know that there is another way. I think that there's 50% of the people that actually are now having the belief that they might be able to actually do it. That's the truth. And to the people who feel stuck, which of course we can empathize with them because we've been there too. Like you feel like you have no control over your situation, which you don't, but for those people, like what advice would you give to them to maybe see the other side of like, you do have other options? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is this, I would say that 
um, this is just what I had to do for myself. I'm, I'm you mind if I, I'm just going to give them the advice I give, I've given to myself. That is, that has allowed me to, um, to have optimal outcomes with many different aspects of my life. Uh, I truly believe that you have to take full responsibility for every single situation that you're in. Once you're able to do that, once you feel like you don't have control, you're done. Once you feel like you don't have control, then all your energy shifts towards playing the blame game on everyone that got you into the situation. You had no control. Once I started to say, look, if my marriage isn't where it wants to be, it is my fault. If my business is not where it wants to be, where I want it to be, it is my fault. If my health isn't where I want it to be, it is my fault. Whether it was my fault or not, it, it doesn't matter. I had to take responsibility. The minute you take responsibility of saying, look, I got into PT school. I got into this. And this was my decision. Here, can I tell you all something? Can I tell you all something? Yesterday. All right. I, 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 I know this is totally random. Okay. But yesterday I got called out by the dental assistant. Okay. So as you all know, I just got back from, from South Florida. Uh, I had a three hour dental procedure. I got, um, and I have a, this whole implant surgery because I lost a tooth and uh, all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. So it's a pretty brutal procedure. Right. And I decided not to go under for it just to do it locally. Okay. All right. So so I'm yesterday, I finished up my calls with my students, right? And um, at 2 p.m., I went to the oral surgeon's office, okay? And uh, I'm sitting in the waiting room, and they open up the door, and they say, uh, Greg? And I'm like, yeah, it's me. So I go in, and they sit in, and the dental assistant says, are you ready? I said, I got no choice, and she stops. Now, I just said I got no, because I don't know. I just thought it was like, it's like something to say, right? Okay. And she stops. She says, oh, no, no, you have a choice. Now, this was a 20. I paid $2,250 yesterday for the procedure. And I got another $2,000 to pay when I go back for my follow-up in seven days. But what she did is she said, oh, 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 no. You know, you got a choice, Mr. Top. And I said, you know what? You're right. I choose to do this procedure. Let's get it, girl. <laughs> and we went to the room and we started the process with the jackhammers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we started the whole process, y'all. And, and listen, you want to know something? But it was actually like, whoa. I, and, and I don't know what got into her. And I, I mean, I want to tell you, I appreciate it. She's right. I have a choice for everything I do. I had a choice to show up for this podcast. I had a choice to, to, to seek working with the both of you. You had a choice of working with me. You had a choice to come into my program. You had a choice to start this podcast. I had a choice to start my podcast. Many people choose to, many people don't. I had a choice to say to myself in 2004 when I was on the verge of of, of, of being in a really tough predicament in my marriage because we were not spending time together. I had a choice to blame it on my boss or to blame it on myself. I chose to blame it on myself. I chose to blame my marital issues and me not spending time on my wife on myself because it was my choice to take that job. It was my choice to take the long hours. It was, it was my choice to do all of those different things. So it was my choice to fix it. And once people understand that and they take full responsibility for their actions, they will see that the world that's out there has all of their answers. But you have to be willing to say, it's my bad. Gabby, you look like you have something to say. You're thinking hard over there. <laughs> no, that was just, I'm speechless. That's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say when it comes to that. I mean, I got a lot more to say. But, you know, listen. Hey, listen, you know, um, there are so many of us that are just so passive about our life. 
and are living life as though everything that we're doing is an accident. And, um, and, I, and I'm just not going to do that. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. There are too many people. There are too many people that had to pave the way for the three of us right now that are speaking. That it would just be just a blatant, overt sin for me to live my life like it was an accident. And I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. And, and, um, and I'm going to take full responsibility for, for everything that's going on. You know, my, my, my 93 year old grandmother, um, just passed away. Right. And, and, um, and you know what, and this is the one thing y'all, this is why it's like, I, like, I'm not quitting at anything. She worked too damn hard to bring us to this country to give us an opportunity. She worked too damn hard to go out and be an entrepreneur so that she can create a better life for her five children. She worked too damn hard um, to not, not just become an entrepreneur and be a waterpreneur. She actually said, you know, I'm going to bust my tail and bust my ass so that when my kids need to go away, I could take care of their kids. I can actually have the time freedom to do that. And because she did that for me, she was able to speak so much truth into my life. And she was able to get me on a path of seeking wisdom and train me on Proverbs. And today, without that, I can't be the coach that I am for you all. And without that, you all can't affect all the people that you're affecting. So my grandmother worked too damn hard to give us this opportunity for me to act like a damn victim. And my grandmother is your grandmother because basically y'all are my sisters from another mister. So, 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 our, so our grandma worked too damn hard for us to be quitting and acting like a damn fool. And we are not going to let her death go in vain because we're tripping. We're going to take full responsibility for our actions, for our situation, and we are going to figure our way out of it. Let's get it. Wow. Yeah, you're so speechless. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you can see it, obviously, on my face. Everybody can see my face right now. <laughs> That's you hit it right there. That's it. That's it. And for the people who don't want to, okay, this is kind of a side rant, but um, a lot of people who listen to our podcasts don't know all the work that kind of goes behind it and the communication mm -hmm. and the group and like the big mastermind that you've started that we're part of and all of that work as well. Nobody really sees that, but when we tell them, I think they're kind of blown away at kind of the inner circle that of healthcare providers that exist that they don't realize exists. Um, yeah. What would you tell people who are hesitant to invest in themselves? You, you, I mean, you aren't. <laughs> you're not hesitant to invest in yourself. Because if you're listening to this podcast, you're currently investing anywhere between three to five thousand dollars a month in yourself. Like you're in school. Like you don't have a problem investing in yourself. You might have a problem investing in something that everyone else doesn't approve of. That might be the the uh, issue. You don't have a problem investing in yourself. When 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 I got into PT school. I mean, I mean, you would, I mean, we, like, we could do the Macy's Day Parade. I mean, it was like the greatest thing ever, right? Okay, like, like, like people don't have a problem investing in themselves. People have a problem doing things that other people don't want them to do. People have a problem with living a life that's based on other people's approval. That's the problem they have. Investing yourself has never been an issue. We invest in four-wall places that don't even have any life to it. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Like this thing cost me a half a million dollars, right? My other house cost me nearly 2 million damn dollars. We have no problem investing in that. We got no problem investing in a car. They can't even talk to us. We, we have no problem investing in traditional schooling that pays us uh, anywhere between a tenth to a third of what a year of what we're going to make out in the workplace. Come on, man. Like, 
We have no problem with that. That's not the issue. The issue is, is that the high performers and the high earners and the high impactors are willing to do what everyone else doesn't do. So for me, let's talk about the group for a second. For me, I, I had a choice. Now, like, I don't even know if I've talked to y'all about this, right? I was a consultant for private practices from 2009, okay? Something I did on the side. I had a private practice since 2005. In 2009, I really took off with my practice because I was doing lots of blogging and the blogging turned into me using it for SEO to help build my practice. And I really became known as the Google dude in 2009, okay, all right? And I did that for private practices, okay, all right? All right, and, and, and the truth is, since 2009, even when I got sick at the end of 2009, going into 2012, during that time, I, I had like nine practice owners that were my clients, okay, all right? And in 2015, when I spoke at PPS, okay, which is the APTA's private practice conference, so I spoke at PPS, I got so many consulting opportunities and I came home, sat down with my wife and said, babe, I don't want any of these. One opportunity was actually a company that basically said, look, if you work with us, it's a home exercise program uh, company. If you work with us for um, three and a half years, they're out of Chicago. If you work with us for three and a half years, uh, we believe we can give you $5 million. That was the deal. It didn't even take me 10 seconds to say, I don't want it. Because at that point in my life, I knew that I wanted to do the unthinkable. And the unthinkable is, was based off of a need that my staff was telling me. My staff uh, was telling me that, Greg, we're a PT school, and the optimism that we have is totally different than the optimism of everybody else in our class. And my staff told me, Greg, they need you. And I said, okay, well, just tell your friends that they can come to the clinic and, you know, I was only working like at that point, the businesses was doing really good. And I was like working a day or two in the clinic a week. And I was just like, just have them come over here. And I'll, I'll just like have them shadow me and they can talk to me and like, I'll take them out to lunch, whatever. No, 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 Greg, we need to do something else. And y'all, that was the first day of me doing my first video on YouTube, which was, should you be a physical therapist? Literally the conversation right before I did that video was that conversation. Okay. So the truth of the matter is, is that I was told by everyone, do not touch, do not touch young people when it comes to business coaching. Don't touch them because they are not entrepreneurs. That is the kiss of death. That is what I was told, Gabby. Sarah, that is what they told me. Do not touch the young people. They are the kiss of death when it comes to business coaching because they don't know. Only do it people that make this amount of money so they can, but okay, that's what everybody told me, but I didn't listen to them. So the truth of the matter is that the group that we have, we have people like you all in the group that are PT students. We have people that aren't even in PT. We have people that are dietitians. We have occupational therapists. We have physical therapists. We have doctors in our group now, in our mastermind group. In SSPT, we have mental health counselors, we have PTAs, we have CODAs. We have nurse practitioners. We have 11 disciplines in SSPT. So at the end of the day, investing in yourself is not the issue. The issue is, are you living a life for yourself or are you living a life for everybody else? I wasn't gonna to listen to anybody. I wanted to do something because I knew that I was like both of you. I knew that I was hungry. I knew that if you just, like all people needed to do for me was just show me another way. And I knew that I was willing to listen. And I knew that there were people out there like Gabby and Sarah. And I knew that there was more people out there that if someone was willing to invest in them and show them the way, they would say, you know what? I want to know that way. And let me tell you something. It is Friday. It is right now 5.34 p.m. I have had a packed day. I have been traveling 
I just, I did a mastermind event less than two weeks ago. I traveled straight to California, came back, traveled to Orlando, came back, went down for my grandmother's funeral, just had a three hour dental procedure yesterday. And I, you guys are the last set of calls that I have before I have to go speak at another event tomorrow. I am so freaking excited and passionate and fired up because I am doing what everybody else told me I couldn't do. So anyways, I know I got off on a rant there, but I just think that that's really important to understand. People don't have an issue investing in themselves. People have an issue doing things that other people don't approve of. That's the issue. I'm glad you made that point too, because I was hoping you'd go down that kind of rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was perfect. That was it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously, like, 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 does anybody get into PT school? Just, just think about this for a second. Does anybody get in PT school? And they're like, they finally get it. And they're like, oh, uh, no, I'm not going to. No, of course, because it's the norm. It's what we do. Just, just tack it on, baby. Like, whatever. Just take it. Like, it's no big deal because everybody approves of it. Because everybody approves of it. So, you know, at the end of the day, the one thing I will say, as, as you all are young entrepreneurs, and I still think I'm fairly young, you know, as an entrepreneur, 15 years, you know, I think I look all right. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to win in the entrepreneur game, you know, an entrepreneur is someone that has to have vision. And, and an entrepreneur, like, like, like you can't be a follower and an entrepreneur at the same time and be successful at both. You can't be a successful follower where all you're doing is seeking approval from people and just want to follow people and also be an entrepreneur who is basically someone that's successful at having a vision and turning that vision into a business where you're going to own and operate a business. And because you have such a strong business, you're willing to put up financial risk in order to do those things. It's not possible to be both. And the truth is most people just want to follow. I'm not interested in that person. <laughs> and neither are we. <laughs> and now that you have, you know, kind of delved down and been helping students and new business owners, even though people say that's the kiss of death, like, how do you feel about that decision now that you've been doing that for a couple of years? It's, it, it's the greatest decision for me because I believe that, um, I believe it's changed my outlook on work. Um, I believe that it's the first time I can truly say I'm, I'm, I'm 100% in my calling. I've always been a professional. I've always been a professional. A professional is someone that, that understands that um, you have to show up to work. And I've always shown up to work with zest and with excitement because I have to perform, right? Um, but there's a difference now. The difference now is that uh, I, I'm not looking at the clock. Like, I'm not looking at the clock. Like, like, you have to pull me away from this work. This work is so exciting. Um, I'm working with people that happen to be my friends. I don't have to do the things that I do for my students. I don't have to take my students on vacation with me. Okay. That's like, <laughs> like, like that's not normal. Okay. But I'm, I'm working with the people that I love working with the people that I'm working with so much. Um, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just absolutely, you know, phenomenal. And, and again, I mean, I, I loved being a physical therapist and I still am a physical therapist. Um, but uh, today, I've totally chosen this path. And there's not one day in the last four years of me doing this that I've ever dreaded. Not one. That's crazy. That, that, that is my goal and my dream for all. I have never dreaded a day. Like, I, I, I don't dread it. It's just freaking amazing. It's amazing. Y'all should see what they have to do, like when they have to hold me back in like chains, when they have to take my business cell phone away from me when I go away. Ah! <laughs> like y'all, it's freaking amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's the greatest thing ever. So 
I, I really just wish everybody could feel what I feel. It's just the greatest. It's so, it is so freaking epic. And I truly believe that people can get that. I just think people don't know what they don't know. They won't even, they won't even entertain the, the, the fact that they could actually do something that they love. They, they won't even entertain the fact that they can actually have clients that they'll, because, because, because then you might have to put into work to actually build relationships with those people. There are many people that are working with me today that have been listening to my message for over four and a half years, but they, I've shown up for them every single day. I've shown up for them. Like we, like we actually, we, uh, we actually uh, did something the other day where while I was gone, my team like basically computed all the content that I have. And you realize that if, if I stop today, I have over six and a half years of content that you could listen to every single day and not have to listen to the same thing over. Six and a half years. I could stop today and you will, you will, you, and you can listen to me and have something different every single day for six and a half years. Now, because of that, I want to say this, I want to say this is really important because of that, it has allowed me to bring in people like people can know for sure they they don't have to make a mistake. They can know for sure. Like, oh my gosh, this is my guy. That's a lot of work. Now everybody wants to have the perfect set of clients and to have a group like what we have. And everybody's just like, when you, I mean, come on ladies, when we all get together, is it like, just like, oh, it's just freaking amazing, right? It's just amazing. But that's a lot of work it took to, to, to orchestrate that and to get people to know that these are my people. Just, just great. And that's it. Working with the best people every day and it's your passion and it's you never get tired of it i like i absolutely love that and you want that for everybody but that comes with putting in the work and investing in the relationships and like you said creating decisions for yourself not or living like are you living the life that you want to live or for other people like you said and, 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 and by the way, Gabby, all this stuff takes time. Mm -hmm. So every single day that you don't believe is just another day that you're delaying the process of starting that to create the dream life that you want to have. Today, I have the dream life. I have the dream life because the dream life for me today is that I'm not rushing to get home. Like this is as pleasurable as being home. Home is great. This is great. It's all great. It's, it's just all great. It's all great. It's work though. It's all work. But, but, but again, at home, it was like, Oh my God, your kids are amazing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. It's freaking work. Okay. All right. It's work, but it, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing to go home. And when I go up the stairs and I go in the house, the kids act like I went to Afghanistan for three years, even though I just left this morning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's a blessing, but that's work. Right. It's, it's, it's a blessing to be able to, to be able to have as much energy um, at 6 p.m. as you had at 7 a.m., right? But it's work to be able to have people that don't suck you dry. It's all work, you know? So the truth of the matter is, is that like, like you can do it. Now, do you want to put into work? I don't know. All I know is this. I just know that you have a choice. As my dental assistant said, Mr. Ty, you got a choice. And she's so damn right. I have a choice and you have a choice too. Now, you might have to make the choice. Do I want to learn how to do this? Okay, well, that's your choice. That's, that's, that's not for me to decide. That's your choice, right? But I just know this. I know that it all takes time. It all takes time. And people are like, oh, you know, I'll get to it in two years, three years. Okay, well, you can get to it in two to three years, but it don't mean that it's going to happen for you in two to three years. It takes time to do these things and then to learn how to do it properly, and then to execute it. That's it. I have one last question for you that we may or may not leave an episode, but you're very good at identifying people's strengths and kind of like having a vision for maybe 
dreaming bigger than they think they're able to dream. Mm -hmm. And for, um, I don't know how to word this. I guess the question is, when we had you on for episode 10, did you think you would be here at episode 100? I, I personally, I didn't know I was going to be here for episode 100. Me personally, I knew there would be an episode 100. Like, I mean, I knew that for sure. Now, I'm honored that I got on episode 100. And I got to be honest, when I tell you I'm honored, I am honored. Okay, I am honored to be, a, but I knew there was going to be an um, episode 100. The only way there wasn't going to be an episode 100 is if uh, you all made the choice to remove yourself from my world. And not just my world. I'm, I'm not giving myself all the credit. But if you decided to remove yourself from, and, and, and you decided that you made the choice to remove yourself from the people that I orchestrated to be around you. Because there's many of those people that are now at episode 100 as well. It's because I have trained people to be able to actually enjoy the process. Now, let me ask you something. Did y'all enjoy episode 72? I, I mean, I don't know if you remembered it, but I'm sure you enjoyed it. I mean, it's, I mean the way that y'all work together, um, like you all have such an amazing relationship. So I'm sure that any time that you've done an episode, uh, just the fact that you might not even like the guests, but the fact that the two of you are here, you're like, hey, you know what? <laughs> you know something? It's all good. Gabby out here with you. Sarah's like, yeah, out here with you. It's all good, girl. We're going to laugh at them after we finish, aren't we? Right? Listen, listen. The truth is, is that you have orchestrated all of this. The two of you have orchestrated this. You control this whole thing. So the reason why I knew there was going to be an episode 100 is because I knew that if I can get you all around the right people, you'd actually enjoy the process. And you wouldn't be laboring. And uh, 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 so I think you get to, okay, now let's get rid of it. No, you enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. You enjoyed either each other. You might have enjoyed the guests. Maybe you didn't enjoy the guests all the time. You might have enjoyed, hey, you know something? I learned something today that I didn't know before. There's something you took out of it. So the truth is, is I knew you were going to get to 100. I knew it. I knew it. And that's the reason why I know you're going to get to 200. I know you're going to get to 200. It's also the same reason why I know that the mission that you all have is going to succeed at gargantuan levels that you all can't even comprehend right now. Because I know that the biggest determining factor on people succeeding is if they have resiliency. And what I do know, and I know this, now I know this, I, I, I knew this at 95%, maybe 98%. Now I know this at 100, is that my girls are as resilient as they come. They ain't going anywhere. And because of that, I already know that you all are gonna win at anything that you do. Thanks, GT. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Uh, Is it true? We just want to say thanks for coming on the 100th episode and for always having faith in us mm -hmm. and dreaming, pushing us to dream bigger than we think we can. You know something I want, well, first of all, you're welcome. But something that I think is just so important for you all to understand why, why this is, because I think, like, sometimes I wonder, it's like, I wonder if, do they understand like do, like, do they think I'm flighty? You know what I mean? Like, he's always dreaming big. Y'all, here's the deal. The reason why it's so important for you to be successful is because your dreams aren't that big to me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, 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 it's, like, like it's not that big. Like, like, I, like I believe that you all are going to do amazing things because this is what happens when I push myself. I'm like, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. They can do that. And if I continue to push myself, then when it's time for you all to go to that next level, I'm like, yeah, they can do that. I did that. They got two of them. They can, they can figure it out. I mean, with my little pea brain, I mean, they can definitely figure it out. You know, and I mean, I've already done that. So I know that I can direct you on how to get there. So, so this is the reason why if you, like, like, like you all have just said to me, hey, you're so appreciative of having me believe in you. This is the reason why you have to push. The reason why you have to push is you have to be that for somebody else. 
Now, we started the episode by saying that there are many people that are willing to donate their kidney in order to get rid of their loans. So do you realize how inspirational the two of you can be to those people? The same way that I am to you? And do you realize when you get those people to finally see the way, why it's so important for you all to continue to push yourself to higher heights so that you could continue to have the same belief in them on what you have for them to not sell their kidney, <laughs> to, to go another way. And that once they decide, okay, I'm not going to do that. And now they move into this next rung of life, why you need to have even bigger dreams for them. The only way that's going to happen is if you continue to level up. Does that make sense, y'all? It does. It really does. Because we're not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> it was so funny. When um, Gabby and I met for the first time January of this year mm -hmm. in real life, and I think, first of all, that's mind-blowing. Second of all, when we met at CSM, other people had asked us, like, when are we, like, what happens when we graduate? And that had never even crossed our minds. We were like, well, we're just going to keep going. <laughs> like, right. I don't, it was just so funny to me to meet Gabby. And we, we both had that same reaction. We were like, what do you mean? What happens after that? Like, we're, yeah. we're like, what's the, for me, I was like, oh my gosh did something bad happen? I was like, yeah. oh, like, it didn't cross our minds. We're like, okay, we graduate. We're, we're going to be physical therapists, but that does not mean we are stopping what we're having. Like, no. It's, it's, it's just, it's just the, it's the mentality. It's, it's, it's the mentality of what people are used to. Okay. Like, you know, I stopped this thing. And then it's just, that's, that thing's done. And then we move on to this thing. Now you're a physical therapist. And then you move on to this. Like, it's just the mentality. It's no different. By the way, they said the same thing with Joseph and Casey. It's just the mentality, you know? Just understand this. For you all out there that are listening, just understand that, you know, you're being brainwashed in some way. Just like, I know that I'm being brainwashed every single day. I, I've just decided that, um, who do I want to be ba like brainwashed by? Like, like, that's it. Like, like, that's it. I mean, like, I don't know how else to say it, but, you know, just look, you know what, y'all? Look at the people that are always smiling and always happy. Y'all, y'all, listen, listen, I never have a power call y'all, y'all not happy. All my people is just damn happy. Okay, so if you want to be around people that are just happy all the time, like seriously, figure out what the hell are they doing? Why are they so damn happy? Okay, and that's it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks for being such an amazing example for us and a great mentor to us. And you have changed so many people's lives. And I know... We know that because we've seen it. And I know a lot of people listening maybe don't understand that they're also capable of changing other people's lives and that they can change their own lives because there's amazing people like you out there. There are. This, we, we, we live in the wild, wild west right now. Of, of, and and it's, it's open season for anyone. Whoever you want in your life, you can get them in your life. It is absolutely amazing. Um, Gosh, it's, I can't, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. It is so crazy, the world we live in today and how readily available and accessible everyone is. You want to know what's so crazy? Girls, I got to tell you this. Right? So, I'm, I'm sorry, I know y'all want to end the episode, but this is so freaking no. good. Like, it's so good, no it's so good, so good, so good. All right, so I want to tell you something. In 2012, right, 2012, it's that, that's the last time I was really struggling with some health stuff. Financially, doing great. Health-wise, doing terrible. And that's when I really, really started to turn to personal development. And at that time, like, YouTube was readily available. 
right? And I want to tell you all that I decided to become brainwashed by Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, you, you, I mean, I've never met the man before, but Tony Robbins, like, I listen to him every single morning, every single YouTube video I can get. I just, oh, you, Tony Robbins. Like, Tony. And literally, that man spoke to me more than my father. And it was available. He was available to me. The crazy thing of today is that today I live, I live in a place called Indian Rocks Beach. And uh, my favorite breakfast place is about 10 minutes from my house. And the owner of that restaurant, I, I'm, I'm a local and I go in there all the time. And there's, you know, when, when I, and one day I was listening to something and the owner said to me, what do you listen to? And I was like, oh, I've listened to some Tony Robbins stuff. And he's like, oh, it's like, you listen to Tony. And I can tell, like, the way he said it, I was like, I think this guy kind of knows, he knows something. He's like, yeah. He's like, I was actually Tony's first coach. He's like, Tony, his first event that he had, I was at his first event, and I became one of the coaches that Tony hired. And he's now on Tony Robbins' board. He actually got Joseph and Javi um, tickets to go to Tony's event. And um, and I'm telling you all that because recently he said to me, and this is after I did SSPT Live, he was like, so how did your event go? And I said, it went amazing. And I said to him, you know, I know you know Tony. And I was like, I just want to put this in your ear now that one day I would love to have him at my event. And he actually said he's going to talk to Tony for me about this. And, you know, I just was thinking about it. I was like, Today, we live in this wild, wild west to where this random guy named Tony Robbins was able to brainwash me and be in my ears because I didn't have other people around me that were positive like that when I needed that in my life and I was at a dark time in my life health-wise. And the world is so accessible that a guy who owns a breakfast restaurant here on the beach can actually look me up online and realize that this random dude that comes in and everybody just says, hi, Greg, hi, Greg, hi, Greg, that he's not just a nice guy. He's actually a guy that's doing some pretty incredible things in healthcare, which can then lead to a conversation of finding out that he's actually on Tony Robbins' board, which then could potentially, I don't know when it will happen, but could potentially lead to Tony Robbins now, the same guy that I obsessed over listening to, can eventually teach my students. If, if, if that doesn't get your blood boiling on the world that we live in today, then I don't know, man. Take a hammer and beat the crap out of your toe. I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> I don't know what to say to y'all. Because that freaking fires me up. <laughs> That's incredible. The two degrees of separation. I think you told me that or Joseph told me that. Someone told me that. And it just. But Gabby, it's true. It's true. Like, like, do you guys know who Ed Milet is? Yes. Okay. So, so Ed Milet, um, I found out about Ed Milet about a year and a half ago. And I reached out via a DM to Ed Milet. I didn't hear anything for a week. A week later, Ed Milet says, he actually responded to me personally. And I know it was him because it was a voice message. This is the world we live in, y'all. It's not even two degrees. It's one degree of separation. You can literally be in front of anyone that you want. It never used to be like that. Before, if you wanted to get in touch with the Backstreet Boys or NSYNC, you had to send fan mail to this address and just hope that maybe one day they'd read it or something like that. No, no, no. It don't work like that anymore. You just DM people. If, if, if I DM, like, like I could DM Tony Robbins and his team right now, and they might not answer, but I know if I DM them, I, I, I could DM them 50 times and either they're going to delete me or they're going to respond. Like, that's how crazy it is today. That's it. That's it? That's it. Man. We talked about a lot, talked about personal development, Tony Robbins, and 
And really, it's the thing that really stuck with me is the choice. You have a choice. You have a choice. Let me repeat that. You have a choice. (laughs) You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it really is. And I think once people understand that, uh, then they can actually take ownership of their life. That's it. Like, like you have a choice. Every morning that you have the opportunity to wake up, um, you have a choice to express gratitude. <laughs> see, see, I got you. There. Okay, see, I got that. Um, you, you, you have a choice in 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 every single situation, and once you understand that, you take ownership. That's when you can actually transform your life. Perfect ending. That was it. That's it. Oh, GT. Gosh. These, that was great. That was awesome. That was great. That was great. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, my gosh. Man, that was incredible. And uh, that Tony Rot, like, I am just. Is that amazing or what? That's crazy. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, listen, y'all got to understand this. So, so, why, so why is it, why is it that? we can potentially get Tony Robbins in the next two or three years. So let me tell you something. Y'all understand this. What we are doing is revolutionizing the entire healthcare industry. And it's a brand new market. Healthcare people and entrepreneurs, sorry, and entrepreneurs don't go together. They don't go together. And we're changing that. So what that's doing is it's opening up a brand new opportunity for the big people. I don't know if you all know who Shalene Johnson is, okay? But Shalene Johnson is, was the first person I ever took an online program from online, like, like an online course from. And Shalene Johnson is a massive, massive female entrepreneur, okay? And I always said to myself, gosh, if I could ever do so good in her programs that she promotes me, it's game over, right? And the truth of the matter is, is that she, like I never, I did get promoted by her in her like testimonial videos and stuff like that. But like we, I, I blew up without, you know what I mean? Well, guess whose podcast I'm going to be on next week? What? Shalene. Wow. Shalene emailed me personally and asked me, could I be on her podcast? And the reality is that we're just in a, we're just, we've, we've created such a massive movement that like, we can't, we don't have a choice. Like we can't stop. You all can't stop. You can't. It's so much bigger than any of us, even myself, even I don't get it. It's so much bigger than we can even imagine. We can't stop. No. And I think also, just, just one more quick thing, and I know the podcast is up, but, but one other uh, a quick thing. And Alex Engar said this to me about two years ago. About, no, about a year and a half ago. He said this. He said, um, he said, Greg, he said, eventually, like, the way we market is going to have to be done the way that you do it. You're, you're actually forcing people's hands in marketing. And I said, go ahead and explain more. He says, Greg, the way you care for people and love people. Like tactically, the way you do it, it's not like the greatest, like most, he's like, it's all off a heart and and love. And 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 he says it's 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 gonna force the marketer's hand. It's gonna force their hand, like they gotta change. You know, and and he's like, it's not just changing health here. It's like you're changing marketing. You're changing marketing. It's the, the whole thing. And so, and so, yeah, we, we can't stop. 